Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn Design with Ganesha. In today's video, we're diving into the world of auto layout in Figma. This marks my second video on the topic, and I'm excited to explore the responsive design techniques and strategies, the kung fu, if you will, that can elevate your design game. First up, let's talk about the fundamentals of auto layout. With Figma, it's as easy as selecting two objects and hitting Add Auto Layout, or using the handy keyboard shortcut Shift plus A to instantly create an auto layout frame for your button or element. Now, once we have our auto layout frame set up, we can fine tune the alignment of our child objects right from the alignment panel. Whether it's vertical alignment or tweaking the appearance of our button, Figma gives us the flexibility to create polished designs effortlessly. But wait, there's more. With Auto Layout, we can also add padding to our elements, giving them that extra bit of spacing and refinement. Just imagine a beautifully designed button with a perfect 10 pixel padding. It's design magic at its finest. And here's where things get really interesting. Let's say we've created a button with a background rectangle and placed some objects on top of it. With a simple selection of all three and the Shift plus A shortcut, Figma intelligently recognizes the background rectangle as the button background. But that's not all. With Auto Layout, we have the power to create responsive designs with ease. Whether it's changing the direction from vertical to horizontal or fine-tuning the spacing and padding between elements, Figma puts the control in our hands. And here's the cherry on top. Figma's latest feature allows us to adjust independent padding, giving us even more control over our designs. With just a few clicks, we can add custom padding values, creating pixel-perfect designs that stand out from the crowd. So there you have it, a deep dive into the world of auto layout in Figma. OK, we're going to make this menu using auto layout for everything. Right now, we just have a bunch of objects on the screen, and that's not good enough. We want to use the power of auto layout, so let's start by selecting this home icon and the text next to it. Press Shift plus A to add auto layout to them. Now, let's set the spacing between them to four pixels and center them vertically. All right, let's look at a more complex example. I have this list set to vertical auto layout. It works well because when I duplicate the components within it, they respond vertically, which is great. However, the to-do items inside aren't set to auto layout, so let's add auto layout to them. When we do this, it might change a few things and mess some elements up, so we'll need to make some adjustments. First, let's align everything vertically. Next, we want these items to fill the container horizontally. They're currently set to fill the container, which is perfect. Let's check the text. By holding Command and clicking on the text, we can see it's set to a fixed width. We'll change it to Fill Container and now everything should work. The checkbox is set to a fixed width and height while the text will fill the entire container. The to-do item itself is set to fill the container, so it will resize accordingly. Let's resize this container to see if it works. This is perfect. It's exactly what we want because we now have independent padding. If I want to indent this list, I can adjust the left padding for the three grocery items to create an indented list. By overriding the padding settings, I've used the same component to create this indented list. We also have a horizontal auto layout cat pile here. As we add more kitties, it works as expected. Now, if we decide to change the size, we can set the auto layout to have a fixed width. To change the distribution of these kitties, we can set the space odd, which will distribute the space evenly between them. This creates a face pile effect, and we can still move these objects around as needed. I'm designing a dialog box, and I'd like to add some close buttons. The first option I'm considering is placing a close button here. In our header, I've set it to horizontal auto layout with 32 pixels of padding filling the container on the x-axis. An easy way to achieve this is by changing the distribution settings to auto. Now you can see the close button is exactly where I want it. However, the issue with this layout is that the text, which is set to hug horizontally, will continue off the screen. 
To fix this, go into the text settings and change it to fill the container. This will make the text occupy all the available horizontal space. We'll left align it and try adding more text. As you can see, it's now wrapping exactly how we want. Now, if we want a close button in the upper right corner, it gets a bit more challenging with auto layout. But here's a trick to achieve it. First, take the close button and place it in this frame. Drag and hold space to reposition the close button to the upper right. Holding space keeps it within the frame. Next, set the constraints for the button to right and top and test it. It's resizing perfectly. Let's drag that frame into the dialog box and set the horizontal fill to fill the container. Testing it shows that it works perfectly, except the frame is 32 pixels in height. I'd like it to effectively take up zero height. Typing zero. Now we have a zero height frame that allows for this complex button layout while still responding to the container. One last trick. Achieving minimum width or height with an auto layout container. The secret is setting the button to vertical auto layout and adding a frame inside it. This frame, similar to our last example, is set to 150 pixels. This allows the button to hug contents horizontally but expand when text is added. Hope you have a great day and find these tricks useful. That's it for this Figma tutorial. If you learned a lot, feel free to like and subscribe too. Keep this content coming. Have a great day.